Joy Prime as well. You know, when I take a seat like this, it means I have somebody amazing, yeah, to talk to. Yeah, somebody whose story will inspire you, encourage you, and probably you get to learn a thing or two. And today, I have one such wonderful guest in my seat. Yeah, a very hard-working brother who's rise through Ghanaian politics and leadership can best be described as meteoric. Yeah, owing to the fact that he has always pursued excellence all along the way. For over 17 years, he has promoted public policy, you know, youth engagement and proper governance and whatnot. And today we get to delve into his life. It's been a colorful one, even more so in the past couple of days because he's been celebrating three years at the helm of a very, very strategic organization. Yes, one that has been transformed by his leadership. And I'll tell you about him now. But in the meantime, tell a friend to tell a friend. Personality Profile is on. They should get a drink and sit down and watch it on uh, socials as well or something because they will totally enjoy this conversation. Let me tell you about this brother of mine. He's a product of St. Augustine's College. One of the best schools in uh, God. One of the, you understand? There's Persec, there's St. Augustus. You know what I mean? Agabi. <laughs> and of, <laughs> you actually said arguably. <laughs> and of course, the University of Ghana, Lagon, where he nurtured his love for politics. His love for education has led him to acquire many more certificates, including an LLB and LLM in the professional legal practice, uh, a graduate diploma in law from the University of Laws, United Kingdom. And he was called to the bar, the Ghana bar, in October 2023. He's a barrister at law. Yeah. From 2017 to 2021, he served as a board chairman of the Youth Employment Agency, YEA. And in August 2021, he was appointed Director General of the National Lottery Authority, NLA. A year later, the Chief Executive Network also awarded him the overall Public Sector CEO of the Year 2022, and at the 7th CEO Summit and Excellence Awards. In 2014 as well, he was among the 50 people named by the Paris-based Africa Report magazine as one of the top 50 rising stars. Yeah. He's a former national organizer, a former national youth organizer, and a former deputy communications director of the New Patriotic Party. In the last couple of weeks, and the events, if the events in the Kyopim North are anything to go by, you could actually be the next member of parliament for that mm -hmm. constituency. Yeah, Mr. Samuel Ewuku. You know him as Samuel Ewuku. Yeah, he's my guest on Persati Profile today. Welcome, brother. Thank Good you. to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. You're looking you. well. Well, uh, we try to yeah. keep fit. What is it just keep fit or is that secret potion you take every morning? Uh, 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 you know, if <laughs> someone ever told me that someday I was going to be 40, I would have doubted it. I think 40 comes with taking a second look at everything. Is it? Everything. But you don't even look at your it. diet, your everything, and keeping fit, keeping active. And so. I hear you have a secret potion you take every morning. Hmm. Is it the honey or the milk? Um, I, think it's, I think it's more of the, of the ginger tea. It's the ginger tea, rather. Yes, ginger because tea. I mean, when you look good and fresh, no, I'm like, no. okay, that was, like was I try. So I have, I have this uh, friend of mine who goes like, you never under pressure. <laughs> Anytime I see you never under pressure, I said, we soak the pressure. <laughs> we move. Yeah, that's yeah, right. We, we move. move. I we mean, move. it we is move. what it is. It will definitely happen. So why not? Boys for manage. No, but I'm, I'm yeah. really proud of I'm you. I'm excited. Say, to congratulations you. as Thanks well. Thanks so much. You just celebrated, what, three years at the helm of the NLA. That's true. And I'm sure you're really excited about this. Well... Um, I am, but it's also clear that it's the beginning of the end of the tenure. Ah. The, because hopefully, and uh, all things being equal, when I'm elected, God willing, as Member of Parliament for mm -hmm. the good people of the Capitol North, I may not be able to serve as Director yeah. General. So, um, three years, yes, uh, it's been a cocktail of um, tragedies and triumphs, successes and challenges, but you know, there's the covenant keeping God has kept his covenant with us. So, a yara. You try. say tragedies, really? Mm, yeah. I mean, yeah. from outside, I would think that it's been so glorious and just smooth. You know, there's this, there's this guy, this Nigerian musician, I love his song so much. Forgive me, I have a humor side. <laughs> no, uh, you I, think very call, I always want to get the name right, whether Asake or Ashake. Ashake or yes, whatever. Ashake. Ashake's song is lonely at the top. Ah. It's only at the top. Regardless of, um, uh, you know, leadership comes with its own challenges. There are times that my staff will tell you, they close at five. 
but their director general closes around 11. Because mm. it's after they've left that I need to sit down and go through the document. They've brought. Because daytime, people will come with all manner of complaints, their yeah. stories, solving management issues, staff issues, and all. So when they've left, that's when you get to really work. Yeah. And, um, and also, I, I then reflect on what, what has occurred in the course of the day, yeah. um, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and what could be better uh, for the following day. So whilst they are retired, and that is when maybe possibly the next part of my day begins. And so um, it's been interesting working with people of different shades. Yeah. And I'm also one of the early birds to get to work. They <laughs> tell you that their DJ gets to work at 7. Wow. And then Even so, when he closes at 11 p.m.? Mm, in the times I close at midnight, because I, uh, I, I won't deliberately get it wrong. Mm. And I know I won't always get it right. So it's safe to say wrong. you are sleep deprived. Well, sometimes, but anytime I see my bed, I get excited. But it's, it's, very, a, it's an it's opportunity to connect. You know, you, know? you sleep the least, but you look good like all the time. How, how is this hmm. possible? I mean, where do like the gene doctors do this? <laughs> like the, the, the interesting <laughs> aspect is that you can't have it all. Yeah. And so when I have an opportunity to sleep, so I yeah. sleep. Right. Mm, but that's when that opportunity comes. What's the best thing about the period that you've been at the NLA as DJ? The people. And um, I love them back. You know, when I got in there, and when the president was sending me there, it was, you know, I didn't know Jack about that space. But oh, you didn't know much about the lotteries industry? I knew nothing. Oh, I see. I knew nothing. And yet and, you um, still accepted it? It took um, about 10 days to really read about the NLA, the reviews, and all that. But when the president's marching orders um, was quite clear, he said, Mr. Man, <laughs> this is an opportunity for you to make everybody proud and make yourself proud. It's a big stage, and I know you can do it. But he also said, remember, this is public office and there will one day be accountability. When I left the president's end, these words echoed. I sat down and needed to profile the NLA from afar. Mm. I needed to learn about what they do, these people. And I was coming from a heavily political background. I was a seven national organizer of the ruling New Patriotic Party. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if I go there purely with a political mentality, it won't work. Because the people there are from different shades. Mm. But you need to also bring them together to achieve success. So, basically, my sense was that the initial statement would determine the direction the organization was going to go. So, then day one was the 9th of August. Mm. I entered the premises with some two, three, eight visited department by department, wanted to introduce myself to them. But I was very clear. I told them, I'm not here to inherit people's enemies, but I'm here to make new friends. So if you want to make a new friend, come along, come with me, and let's go on this journey of the NLA mm. from where we are to the next success story. And I also told them at my first time, Deba, that I'm not here to pretend to you that I'm neutral when it comes to the Ghanaian political space. I'm heavily political. I've been a party's deputy communications director. I've been the youth leader of a, of a party. I've been a national organizer of the party. But I told them that the president brought me here not to form another political party or to make it an extension of our political party. But he brought me here to partner with you, the NLA management and staff, and together with the board to increase revenue. But I also told them that don't lose your political sense. If you belong to the NDC, no worries. Eight to five, let's raise revenue for Mother Ghana and for ourselves, because the NLA is not a subvented agency. We raise revenue to pay ourselves and to pay into consolidated fund, and then to also pay for our corporate social responsibility. Then I said, after 5 p.m., you can carry the biggest umbrella 
to President Mahama's office or residence and then continue. And then, homeboys or homegirls, if you happen to be MPP, 8 to 5, let's raise revenue. Don't come talk to me about politics. But after 5 p.m., let's meet at the party headquarters mm. or where we can talk our politics. So 8 to 5, I don't want to hear sounds of politics mm. and let's work together. Strangely, when I got there, the staff were divided along, you know, party lines, cabal, this, that, and people were judged based on the regime that brought them, okay. not based on the content of what they put out. So we needed to start with a staff bonding exercise. People were normally not looking forward to the next day coming to the office. The morale was down. So with the month of September and October, we embarked on um, team bonding exercises. We had customer service week a month and all that. Mm -hmm. Every, the participation was huge. We could play football together. We had entertainment nights together. Things that could bring us together for us to see ourselves as family. So that what affects Lexus affects me. Mm. It, was no, it wasn't a matter of between us and them, but about us. So that journey, for me, was the beginning of our rise again yeah. from what I met them. And um, 2022 was a remarkable year. The early turned 60. 60 years before, the first president of the republic, Sergeant for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, praised the first winning number at the NLA um, to produce the first winner when the NLA was birthed. Mm -hmm. 60 years after, the then sitting president, President Nana Ekufuado also praised the first winning number. So President Ekufuado was a special guest of Hana, and for the first time in the NLA's uh, 60 years history, they had the, the president of the World Lottery Association, the, the vice president of the World Lottery Association, the Secretary General of the World Lottery Association, the President of the African Lottery Association, all converging uh, to celebrate the NLA at 60. And in the World Lottery Association journals and reviews, it's been one of the most well-organized events up to international standard. Yeah. And we had uh, visitors of almost about 100 coming from Europe, from North America, um, and from the other countries on the continent. So for me, 2022 was amazing. Yeah. 2023, the NLA also achieved level two of responsible gaming. When I came in, it was basically level zero or one. Um, then the NLA two has now been admitted into the European lotteries as an observer, oh, which is remarkable. So wow. giving the NLA an opportunity to assess almost 70 countries that are within the Schengen and outside the Schengen zone. Mm. For the NLA to get an opportunity to attend programs um, um, participate in conferences and for the NLA to be recognized as a member uh, with observer status yeah. anytime the European lotteries meet. Um, I'm happy I've been able to reconnect them to the World Lottery Association, to reconnect them to the African Lotteries Association. When I came in, the NLA had been kicked out of the African Lotteries Association. And today we have redefined the lottery. There are two significant things that for me um, I'll be walking out of the offices of the NLA when my time is up and I'll say we made it. And, um, and that is um, uh, reviving their Caritas platform. The, the, Caritas Caritas platform, platform, the Caritas yeah. Lottery platform um, was not um, initiated by me. It was initiated in 2012. But between 2016 and 2020, they produced virtually less than 10,000 cities. Um, I think the interface between the NLA and Corporate Ghana, um, the relationship had, had strained. Mm -hmm. Corporate Ghana were no longer coming to the NLA to be regulated. They were finding ways and means um, to operate. And um, two big giants, Guinness Ghana and MTN, they had not operated on our platform for over four years. These are big players as well. Yeah. So I revived the characters platform in October 2021 with uh, Madame Chief of Staff, uh, Madame Akusia Fremor Pari, uh, the then uh, Deputy Minister for Finance, the Honorable Abnau Siasari, the Minister of State for Finance, then Charles Edubwai, the Deputy Attorney General, all coming together, yeah. together with the Ivorians, yeah. uh, the Ivorian Director General, who is the President of the African Lottery Association, to help us uh, uh, re re uh, revive the Caritas Lottery platform. Mm -hmm. And then I had to provide a nexus 
if you look at the Act 722, it enjoins the National Lottery Authority to provide as part of its duties to conduct a special lottery with the sole aim of providing care, support for the poor, the vulnerable, the physically and the mentally afflicted. I realized the NLA did not have a properly constituted uh, charity arm of its operations. And so, um, what that meant was that I saw that as a, as a very serious defect because lottery is about good causes. Mm -hmm. And because many people do not win at the end of the day. But when they do not win, where does these proceeds go? So I had this discussion with the Ivorian Lottery uh, boss, uh, who happens to be the, the one who has provided me with great support ever since I became Director General. And he said he was going to help us set it up. Yeah. The Ivorians have what they also call Good Causes Foundation. And they have footprint in every town in Ivory Coast, where they've built their toilet facility, a school, a hospital, whatsoever. So through diplomatic talks and all with them, the Ivorians also helped us to set up what we now have today as the NLA's Good Causes Foundation, okay. which has touched in excess of almost a million lives within the last uh, uh, less than three that's years. That's impressive. And, it looks um, like you've dropped a lot of Supported successes. schools, supported yeah. um, um, poor but needy students. And, yeah. all. and I tell you, the Ivorians provided a seed money of $60,000 to set up the NLA's Good Causes Foundation. Are you serious? Yeah. That's it's, impressive. Uh, very, very impressive. Wow. And uh, I, I don't take this for granted wow. at all. You know, in my conversations with some of the staff of the NLA, I think mm -hmm. one of the things that they are also very excited about is the mm -hmm. fact that mm -hmm. salaries were upgraded a little bit under well, your, uh, under your well, tenure. Well, not a little bit. So <laughs> oh, let's not a say, little bit. Um, when I got to the NLA, let's say the, the least paid person was a ground operator. Those who clean our compound and those sweepers and all. And they were taking, say, 700 cities. That was the minimum. Mm. But today, that JHS uh, uh, graduates or SHS person that would normally were employed as a ground operator now takes not less than 1,600 cities at the NLA within the three years uh, that I've been there. I gave every staff an automatic promotion when I got in there. Mm. So that put them one grade up. Yeah. Then took my time to now address the gaps in there. Yeah. So. Uh, the senior staff, those who were taking around 2,000 or so, now some take around four to 5,000. So those oh, wow. who are taking five, around the eight, the nine. Yeah. So I've done my bit. That's impressive. And then well, again, um, this year as well, we've also, um, um, to cushion them, we've given them 20% salary increment, which started in May last year. We gave them same salary increment with um, what we call COLA, cost mm. of living allowance, to support them during the pandemic and push yeah. the pandemic time. So they're enjoying Director it. General. They are, they are, they are I trying. Mean, I and then we've been having them, some good entertainment I see some of them night. now and they are smiling. Oh, <laughs> it tells a very, very interesting Cassano story. Casanova form. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they would tell but you, it's, it's, not, it's not courteous to be eating and talking. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but been, they deserve it because um, yeah. they've also stood by the organization. We've had our own challenging and difficult times. And I believe that um, the essence of leadership is also to, to give back to the yeah. people in, in their darkest hour. Mm. And um, one, one thing that I hope to leave with them before I leave is a scheme of service that will properly outline um, um, their various roles and what comes with it. Yeah. So that promotions will not be at the discretion mm. of the director general or a director yeah. and, and uh, to, to help reduce the essence of chronism, favoritism, mm. nepotism, and so on. So once the scheme of service, which um, we receive approval from the board, and it's going to commence in the month of August, it will take about two and a half months to produce it. Okay. And then they can have a scheme of service that guides them into the future. Our aim is to build a, a world-class lottery system with a blueprint for Africa. Okay. And I know that my successor, and again, I was also elected vice president uh, of the African Lotteries Association. Are you serious? Wow, mm -hmm. congratulations. Uh, uh, at this, uh, and I was elected in absentia. This was in March. Okay. Uh, because the same day that the voting was taking place in Morocco, in uh, Marrakesh, or so, Marrakesh or Casablanca, no, in, in Marrakesh, mm -hmm. that same time the Maltese president was in Ghana and okay. he was visiting the NLA because Malta founded NLA. Oh, I see. Yeah, so. 
even though I was away, I was communicating and campaigning via uh, <laughs> WhatsApp and phone yeah. and all that, reaching out to uh, people. So I was elected vice president, uh, yeah. the first Anglophone person to have an elected vice president into the African law tree because it's 95% dominated by the Francophone. Okay. So you need to engage them. Yeah. You need to engage them. You need to trade off and then for them to see the mm. essence of... So even though I will leave, um, it's, a, it's about two to three years, ten. Um, I will leave uh, less than a, uh, halfway through my ten. Yeah. But whoever succeeds me, I will hold the person's hand and campaign for the yeah. person uh, to be able to take over from me. Because if, if the person good goes good. on his yeah. own or her own, the person will make it. Yeah. Because you'll be new to the association. So you need a bit of a... You don't know the DJs there. And yeah. it's, a, it's a mafia. It's a cabal. Is so, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like football. Wow. Mm. Interesting stuff. Mm. Now, in this period, what have you learned about yourself? Well, the essence of being patient and uh, having an opportunity to listen and appreciate people. Mm. Um, you have people coming to you with all kinds of things. And interestingly, those who made me successful at the NLA, my colleague management members have been helpful. The board, these are my superiors. But those that made me successful were the junior staff mm. and some of the senior, but predominantly the junior staff. They've lived through the system. They had seen the ills in the system. And they come to you when everybody has left. So I think they were scared of owning up. Mm. when they want to point out some few things to because I was new. So what some of them used to do was to drop notes by my vehicle. Okay. Uh, about five, six times. DG, when you come tomorrow, go look at this place. The blah, blah, blah happens. Okay. DG, go have a look at this place. DG. So I was always making surprise visits to some offices. Mm. Mm. And... He achieved, I was able to identify some few gaps and loopholes wow. in our system. And I owe my success to Radia NLA to them. And if to win the CEO of the year overall in the public sector back to back in two years um, with, with the it lottery, story. it tells a story yeah. that people have helped to yeah. put us there. What? We're not counted amongst the corporate people. Yeah. Yeah. But, but now it's, it's part of the ish. You know? <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Now, what about your upbringing? What kind mm. of upbringing hmm. would you say helped you to excel in this role? Well, I have um, four sisters. Um, Gertrude, Doreen, Jemima, Mavis, and myself. The only boy? Mm, the only boy. Who okay. came last? Who came last? The last one as well. Uh, Do you think it was, uh, it was your dad trying? It was actually my third sister who named me Samuel. Oh, really? Yes, and I think uh, those times uh, my parents had... Were, I, I think their, their intention was to have a boy and a girl. Okay. So after the first two, and it was, these were two girls. Um, uh, Daddy decided to give another shot, <laughs> and then it was a girl. And at that time, we're not too sure. Uh, mommy had given up. The old girl had given up on uh, the prospect of a boy. Yeah. And so they said, Akabako. Then the fourth one to became a girl, maybe. And to me, there, I was a coincidence. And uh, I think uh, uh, I would say I was a, uh, I wouldn't say I was a product of a try and error. But some way, somehow, I came to uh, as a the final chance. The final one. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, final one. Oh, now we have a boy. We're done. And then... Some so way, when, somehow, when, when, before when, you actually continue mm, that story, mm. is it just me or this has been replicated in your life? <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting one. So, hmm, like, so finally, a boy came and it was summer. So my third sister, Jemima, said that if, whilst my mother was pregnant, said, hmm... If it should be a boy, we should call him Samuel, okay. uh, meaning God has heard. And so Samuel came to, and uh, then I went to Legon, and another friend gave, shortened the name to Sammy. Yeah. So that's how come it's S-A-M-M-I, yeah. a fancy friend of mine. 
<laughs> I don't know. The name they gave me to enter Legon was Samuel. I ended no, exiting Legon with Samuel. Samuel. <laughs> like it's a compound name. Yeah. But so in my life too is another story of that one is three girls and a boy. But it's the same format, isn't it's it? The same format. Because you had uh, three Akaba, girls. Akaba, Akaba, no. Oh, Akaba. No, no, no. I'm saying that uh, same format. You are right. Yes. Then he became a boy. Yeah. So. so but uh, were you personally looking for the boy? Um. Because the first one was a girl. I was indifferent. You were indifferent. I was indifferent. The girls, I was a sweet though. Yeah. That's. What I mean, they they give you a hug every morning. Oh yeah. And then I quite remember my uh, second daughter during COVID. Um, one time, I think she. She she woke up. I was still home. COVID, everybody was home. Yeah. She said, "Hey, Samuel, today you are home. Ah. You fear coronavirus, <laughs> so you stay home with us." <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I couldn't imagine that a little one. Could, but it shows yeah. how these kids now have. Um, so I have Joanna, I have um, Zanetta, I have Adele, and I have Nathan. Nathan, Nathan. great. Mm. Okay. So now let's get to you growing up with girls. Yeah. These are very Is there a certain value uh, that you probably picked from <laughs> that? And do you think it would um, have been different if you had a brother? Well, many of my friends too were guys. But one thing that living with uh, um, sisters that I saw, which I still see in my home now because okay. I have little. It's every day. Either this one has taken this one's dress, <laughs> this one wore this one's shoes, or this one this. So when there's conflict, it's not monetary or financial. It's about this one wearing this one. So I think it was based. But one thing that I also learned about them is uh, their empathy. And even when one does something wrong and you lash the other, the one who came to report to you yeah. now ends up fighting you <laughs> for lashing the sister. Kind of weird. And growing up, I saw the same to among my sisters, but it's the solidarity yeah. that I see among girls. And, um, and that's the same thing I see. I'm not saying you don't see that among guys, but it's much more pronounced okay. among girls. And, okay. um, it, it, it defines who they are. It defines who they are. Um, yes, they can be vulnerable, but Today, I also see a very interesting trend, Lexus. You attend many speech and prize giving days, and you'll be amazed to see that the girl child walks home with more prizes than, than the, the boy child. I don't know if I'm the only one witnessing this, but I've attended about 10 mm. in recent times within the last two years. For me, I think a, um, the, the pioneers of um, educating the girl child the likes of um, Her Excellency Nana Kunidua Jaman Rawlings, mm. uh, Madame Christine Checha, the late Gladys Asma, yeah. Madame Sherry Aite uh, uh, of blessed memory, uh, and all those who were part of the considerable movement to educate a girl child. I think today they should be proud of themselves. Because yeah. the girl child today is able to compete fairly mm -hmm. and sometimes even better than yeah. the boy child. So it's also clear that the the boy child and those of us who are males we should have a way of encouraging the guys yeah, yeah, to yeah. come up how much of a hold did your sisters have on you well not much but did it play a role in your in the choice of wife no 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 not at all but the, you know um they will, if they don't like the person they will have a way of eyeing the person and being conversational. Oh, yeah, you experience yeah. some of that. Oh, yeah, it happens. <laughs> you, say you brought some home before. So when you look at the optics, and when you bring a new one home and the optics, you know that then this one can stay. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they are on very good terms with uh, my, my wife okay. as well. And you like, grew up in Kofudia yes. for a little bit. It, not a little bit. So I, I had my formative years there. Mm. And... Um, Interesting, you know, there was a nursery school. I tell you an interesting story. So, a nursery school in Kofredia called uh, St. Mary's Nursery School. My wife also attended St. Mary's Senior High School. Okay. So, I me mean, sometimes I don't know if I'm an old student of St. Mary's at the nursery <laughs> level or I'm a, a patron of them, <laughs> but that notwithstanding. 
So that's um, going up. So I attended my basic school there with the experimental. And then from there, before I moved to the St. Augustine's. But, you know, for every Ghanaian, many Ghanaian middle class families, my family also experienced its own fair share of uh, challenges growing up. Um, my mother was a teacher. She taught for 40 years. Oh. And um, before I even come to that, that question you asked earlier of how much hold my sisters had, I think um, they inspired me. Mm. Because if you have sisters who were climbing up the ladder, and I'll, I'll dovetail that into the story of growing up and some of the challenges. If your big sister is able to get out of the situation at home, mm. and then she breaks into it and attends the O level, A level. Mm. Those challenging moments I had to sometimes be selling this pure water to help um, the family. Uh, my, the fact, my fourth sister and I, Mavis and I, were those who suffered the most. Why? Because we all have to be supporting selling things on our heads and okay. all that so that number one can go through, yeah. number one breaks through. The second one, those of us following, must support the second one to also go through. Mm -hmm. The third one, the same. When it got to my there was nobody yeah. behind me. So I had to work times too. But I was excited that the girls were breaking through the glass ceiling, attending Holy Child, attending university. Mm. And so I couldn't have gotten it wrong. Mm. And I had to also learn how to go through the mill and then got admission into St. Augustine's. And uh, the abstinence out there absolutely also changed my life. Yeah, St. Augustine changed my life. Look, I had one of the great moments there. And it's a great college. I realized that the, the, this was a college with no wall, but had a school gate. <laughs> and so it was at the discretion of the housemaster to determine which one meant you are broken bounds or not. <laughs> and so, uh, and, and, and I was that witty at that time. I was, I was slim and cute. Okay. So I let me know how to swerve scrubbing. <laughs> but I knew any time I was caught, the punishment was defined. So once the rising bell, it's told them, they say, where the form one boy is, they had a very good, interesting senior course in Yasaka. And um, where the form one boy is, they can't line up. Where Samuel Kude, you know, wake up. Because they always, they always punished me at midnight till 1 a.m. Because I was in the senior's dormitory. We were only two, myself and a friend called Kafi Kluche. Uh, Kafi, I haven't seen in a long while. It's been like almost 20 years, I haven't seen him. But the two of us, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we were admitted in 1999. Okay. So, Kafu and I had a slogan. We said, 1999, <laughs> do or die. Because every day, it was a kneeling down matter. <laughs> every day. I mean, I mean, this was non-negotiable. So, you, they will punish you till like midnight, 1 a.m. So, when the rising bell is played, I won't hear it. And when they come to wake you up, Ah, your colleague there down, you know, see him. Samuel Kushank, one to five. So me, I was always either scrubbing the toilet or the <laughs> pavement. So days that I was able to wake up early, uh -huh. I won't waste my time to, uh, for us to be lined up. I'll just gather my tools and head to the toilet <laughs> to go and scrub. Because I know that, look, it was a standard operating procedure yeah, uh, yeah. for me. And then, but I had great moment there, and the seniors loved me. Now, anytime yeah. I see some of my seniors, it's, it's, uh, it's, it brings back those yeah, fond uh, yeah. memories. And but you, you got into Legon, and some way, somehow, mm -hmm. I mean, the quiet Samuel Wuku that mm -hmm. really was on a Zooming mm -hmm. became very popular because he wanted uh, to get into well, student leadership. Yes. Was that where your love for politics started? No, no, no. It was at a very uh, early age. So um, my late grandfather uh, was one of the founder members of, of the uh, MPP, mm. the late lawyer Dwaman Kwa. And um, I remember staying with him at a point. I could see the likes of Anana uh, Kufu Ado, then Jay Kufu, Kwame Pianim, Hakman Ozo Adman, they come home. Mm. And then, you know, those days, Come in, they strategize. Um, this was uh, before 1996. And um, sometimes uh, at dawn, they would give us uh, these posters. My grandfather would farm us out to go and paste them. 
Okay. That time I was in class four. That's in Kofudia. Yes. Okay. I didn't really understand um, what this movement was about. But I just knew that this was my party of choice. Okay. So I knew no other party yeah. than the new patriotic party. But I also believed in the values that they also espoused. And for one funny reason, um, I also felt that Jerry was an interesting character. Mm -hmm. So I always asked myself, how is this guy able to always get these old, you know, old guys so irritated with, and all that? But for one reason or the other, the love for the politics was at that level. Okay. And um, I, I, I quite remember um, having this discussion with my grandfather at one point in time. Mm. So and you're I, all active all throughout the period. Yeah, and I said to him, someday I want to go into politics. This was uh, when uh, at the age of eight or nine. Mm. I think nine. And then he asked me a question. I think upon second thought and on hindsight, I'm not too sure I answered that question correctly. Uh, may you so rest in peace. He said, so you want to go into politics? He was climbing his stairs and I was following him. I said, yes, Grandpa. I said, hmm, are you sure when they insult you, you are ever ready to stomach it? I said, well, why not? I didn't understand the level of the insult. <laughs> but now, proper, you can feel it in your <laughs> bones. <laughs> <laughs> but that comes with leadership. Yeah. That comes with leadership. So the, the love for it was from there. Yeah. I'd wanted to go into two professions, public service or be a pilot. Oh, okay. And the pilot thing, um, when I had challenges with my sight, because entering the uh, aeronautics uh, school mm. uh, with lenses before was always a disadvantage. Mm. If you are in there and develop an eye issue, yeah. That one, you can pardon, but at the enrollment level, it was difficult. But the love, I knew that someday I'll be back to public um, service because okay. I found it noble. Yeah. I found serving in that uh, leadership position quite interesting. So back to Legon. The first year, the one I served, I was his uh, campaign PA, and I tell you an interesting story today. So I was the one leading him to do the room to room. Okay. I will normally will knock on the doors and the opening, I will give the brief about him and how good he is before he speaks. So I was his main boy. That gentleman today is the national security coordinator, Kuri Are you serious? Yes, yes, wow. yes, 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 yes. So I was his campaign aide. Okay. I used to paste the posters for him. Mm. Uh, his nickname at that time was Asogli. I don't know. Kodi, this one. Uh, 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 make pressure come down. <laughs> <laughs> Pegu was a great guy, uh, you know. So I was with him. We were posting his posters and all. Second year, then I happened to be spokesperson mm. for the, one of the candidates. Because I said, first year, I mm. bought posters. I bought posters first year. Second, Second year, year. dear. <laughs> No, 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 no. You ain't fine, Chiche. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I was spokesperson for one of the SRC presidential aspirants. And that person today is the Western North Regional Minister, Rocky Obeng. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. At that time on campus, a black who was then Nukes president. Yeah. We we're all in the same hall. And the one that I used to also we used to stay in his room to type. We type the things go and distribute and all when i was in first year was uh, martin J. Mensa corsa wow uh -huh. in fact both our black and i were close to martin okay martin today is the honorable minister for local government yeah mm. so first of all that's rocky uh, uh unfortunately we couldn't make it then next year then I said, so, first year, dear, me bo posters. Second, Second year, year me kasamobi. <laughs> third year, dear, me ask me ship. <laughs> <laughs> so, third year, I also put myself up to be elected as a president. It was a very um, uh, tense election. I remember. Uh, I mean, uh, myself and Lord chaotic. Hammer, a very as formidable well. uh, opponent. And then Nestor Yaboa, who was with the EFF, yeah, who was, used to be yeah. with the CPP and now moved to economic fighters or so. Yeah. That was, a, it was tense. After the first round, we were down with uh, two or three of us for the runoff. Yes. Myself and Hama, then it became violent. 
became an MPP and this in matter. Yeah. So that year there was no president. There was no elected. president. I remember that. Yeah, this yeah. was two o six. And it became no. very tense. Very so tense. Much so, that I think so violent. Kofi Boache at that time I think was the original commander also mm. operations. And I do recall him firing tear gas on the camp students were mm. running for their dear lives because they also the police go was violent yeah. uh, protest on campus. It was a very uh, um, um, scary moment mm. for some of us in our young political life. But afterwards, it was a decision-making time. Do I allow this dark past to cloud the future? Mm. Because I'd gotten to a point where moving forward in this political journey had become um, perilous. Mm. Flinching back and say I give up was an act of cowardice. And saying that no motion yeah. uh, 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 will make any sense. So um, I just said, look, what I want to do is to do politics. Mm. And maybe this is the time for me to now understand the rudiment of it or in party politics. Mm. So post the 206, 207, when I graduated and I had my um, after national service, I left for the UK um, to work for a year with the Abbey National Bank. Um, today is now Santander. Came back. We began a movement in 2008. The MPP unfortunately lost in 2008. I left back to the UK on the 16th of February, 2009. And then I had a to message. Go work. To go back to work, mm -hmm. go back to work. But then I had a, a message um, um, from Dr. Nana Yuefri, mm -hmm. who is now the MP for Efijase, as occurring in the Ashanti region, and also um, the chairman of the Select Committee on Health in Parliament. He said, he calls me liberal, because he had also known me from the school days. Yeah. Liberal, Charlie, we formed some group. If I come down, make we all work. Uh, I was coming down on a journey that I didn't know how I was going to go. And that, that group was the Alliance for Accountable Governance. Right. And AFAC had notable people, the um, lawyer Goffrey, the Abu Adame, mm -hmm. the Attorney General, Attorney today, General today, was a key member of the AFAC. Dr. Afri, Afri I've mentioned, uh, Kwabna Bonfe, alias Kabila. Mm -hmm. Then you also had Kweku Kwating. Uh, these were the gurus in a DM of Oriya you know? We began that movement in 2009. Mm. And uh, my job when I was brought down was to be in charge of operations. Okay. And I was trying to help move and mobilize the groundswell of support. So the first demonstration was against Atta Mills with the Atta Dada and the when Barack Obama was coming down. Yeah. And then subsequently, uh, you know, Agitator General. And you, and, uh, <laughs> you rose through the ranks to become National Youth Organizer? Yeah, from that well. sequence. So it was during yeah. the AFAC days. And then um, one day, um, um, Jacob H. Bilamte was then national chairman, said, we want to make you a deputy communications director. And I worked under one of the best bosses I've ever had. And, and any day, I love him too bit. And I'll come here. Yeah. Yeah, but I call yeah. him ranking. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only few people understand the ranking. Me and him, anytime he sends me somewhere, say, ranking, revert. <laughs> Especially when he's not getting feedback. Yeah. <laughs> So Akumia, Akumia, I think, um, guided me in communication. Mm -hmm. And he had uh, one of the biggest influence on me in my communications life. And um, I owe that communication uh, prowess to him. So Akumia, uh, I served under him. Myself, um, I think John Boydou, um, Yabwabia Samoa, mm -hmm. Peri Okujeto, and Olivia Korte. So then, fast forward from there, I became a national youth organizer after my near criminal conviction of contempt, contempt during the, during the, the famous case. election <laughs> petition case. Where you went to yeah. beg. Yes, you went to yeah. who I beg. Yes, <laughs> because, you know, uh, you don't joke with Nana Noma judge. For yeah. so I, had to, I had to be clear in my mind. But as I stood in front of the judge, I tell you an interesting story. You know, after they've heard my story, the lawyers pleaded on my behalf and all, the judges retired to take a decision. It took about an hour. They had no idea of the uh, conference. So I called Gabi, who was seated with the petitioners, then called Akut, the late lawyer Akutuampao. So when they came to me, I said, so 
assuming I should be convicted, <laughs> how many days or weeks will I spend in there? <laughs> said, hmm. Gabby said, hmm. Before they could give me an answer, they said, court rise. I said, God <laughs> damn it, I mean for a surprise. And at that time, I was clear in my mind that that night, either I was spend it with my wife, or I was spend it in cell. So I had conditioned my mind. Um, so when I was uh, acquitted and discharged, <laughs> somebody sent me that picture that they with what I was wearing. The person said, this was just yesterday. The person said, I think you need to frame this picture. <laughs> that, that picture, I think any time I'm tempted to speak against the law justices, you it should serve as a reminder. <laughs> So um, then from there, I became national youth organizer yeah. and um, became national organizer okay. in okay. 2018. So youth organizer, I was able to help the MPP win election 2016 with a uh, uh, serious mobilization yeah. of the youth in Ghana to produce a president. Mm. And then in 2020, um, um, I also won, to contributed my quota as national organizer together with the team to produce the second term of President Ekufuado. So afterwards, I felt I'd done my bit. Yeah. President also, within the first term, took me to the YEA mm -hmm. as board chairman. Then, currently at the NLA. So it's been an interesting journey. Um, I've had uh, great support from yeah. family. Yeah. Um, because in, in, in this journey, uh, if the home is disturbed, you cannot think. You and I, 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 I owe a great deal of gratitude to uh, so my now, wife and the kids. So now, obviously, we are aware of uh, the next steps. You, mm. if all goes well, mm. by Praying it goes well. We had, seven, a, we had a great walk. Yes, I saw the Ophir walk with yeah. Dr. Baumia. Exactly. And a lot of people who were supporting you. It looks yeah. like, uh, uh, for, I, I think you said, look, 75%. You, you're very optimistic. I'm going to work that on that. And yeah, I, there's no, no elections as a top up. Yeah. In this our game, you don't take the people for granted. Yeah. And I work hard for every vote, mm -hmm. not just for myself, but for my presidential candidate. Okay. It's only when he wins I win. Okay. Make no mistake, Article 58, 59 of our constitution is an executive presidency. And so you can also bring prosperity to your people when you have a leader that you can partner with. So now, I work for myself and work for him. Let's talk about the government. Yes. Um, in the past eight years, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What do you make of the performance of your government? Well, I think that the, f the, the, the strength, the, the, the greatness of the MPP was seen in this first term. And I say this because we came in at a time, even though it was under an IMF economy, it didn't stop us from introducing our major flagship programs like the free SHS that today, I am still convinced that it's one of the biggest social interventions ever by any government in sub-Saharan Africa. Because that is at a goal, automatically giving both the rich and the poor an opportunity to sit in a classroom. And so in spite of the challenges of the IMF economy we inherited, we would introduce that. Then also started the 1D1F. Then started this, you know, that's the industrialization drive then procured ambulances across the country for every district to operate. So Ghana was, on a, on a, on, was taxing to take off again. And then unfortunately for us, we were struck with a deadly pandemic that nobody could envisage. And like this, maybe people sometimes underestimate the, the cruelty of the pandemic. But to make it more graphic for you, it got to a point you couldn't shake your own brother's hand. I mean, it's, it's not fiction. People couldn't congregate in church. Even when it was lifted, they said 25 or 50 people let it go. And almost everybody became a medical doctor by wearing face masks. I watched CNN pictures and it's still fresh on my mind. London under lockdown. Streets of New York deserted. Places where people like, it's like an everyday thing. And back home in our country, people were scared to even step out. At that time, the government had a choice, either to protect lives or to protect the economy. And governance is about choices. 
Donald Trump, like this at that time, took a decision to protect the economy. It had these consequences. Millions of Americans died. And I have a friend who works at a hospital in New York. He says, Sammy, every day waking up to go to work was a nightmare because I could, 100 people were dying through my hands minimum every day. And so we're always calling the next track to come for it. So that was a decision the government of America took. Here in Ghana, we needed to also make a decision. The president was clear in his mind that we will protect human lives because we can rebuild the economy again. That had its consequences. It meant that you have to break the vote at the bank to be able to take care of your people. In Nigeria and South Africa, salaries of, of workers were not being paid because they were not going to work. But in Ghana, we needed to be paying them every day, every month, even though they were at home. Educational facilities were completely on its knees. The only thriving sector was the health sector because human beings were there. So this should give you a sense of where we were. And to make it more graphic, vessels coming into your country had to be docked at a point for two weeks with the hope that if they were carrying virus, you could have died at a point. You were, no, you were no longer exporting, you were no longer importing. The only imported goods were medical equipment. So your economy was at a standstill. Whatever you had gathered was what you were using to take care of your citizenry. So that's something the greatness of the MPP. Okay. So that first four years still produced results of the MPP being able to have some factories taken off, these ambulances, this free SHS, this one, the one uh, this one district, one warehouse yeah. and all. Then fast forward, post-2020, um, it was now that we're beginning to have the post-COVID effect. Just when we're coming out of it, we also had another senseless war breaking out in Eastern Europe. I didn't know if this Russia-Ukrainian war had not happened. I never knew that Ukraine was such a pivotal country in the distribution of grains and the production of grains. Okay. And the global supply chain of fertilizer was also completely disrupted. That would definitely affect your agricultural sector. I'm not making excuses, but these are things that... These, these, are, these are facts that we are all these are aware facts. of. That notwithstanding, um, I believe that the second term hasn't been easy for us. It hasn't. It hasn't been and easy for obviously, us. obviously, the we've, we've, we've been able to knit together as a country. Yeah. We haven't experienced um, what uh, is going on in other countries. Because Ghanians we are understand. aware of these challenges yes. that you actually mentioned. But, uh, but these are not fiction. No, no absolutely yes. not. I yeah. mean, we are aware of all the challenges yeah. that came with COVID, yeah. with the wars and whatnot. But someone would say that many years after a lot of economies have recovered a lot of people are now thriving mm -hmm. we haven't so much and that's how come in the past couple of months or yeah you would hear people complain about you know the state of the country um uh, i think we've turned the corner of living and 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 all of that do you think that at this point where we are now Ghanaians believe the NPP can continue in the next term and so, deliver better governance? So it's, a, it's, it's about um, scrutinizing the alternative. Um, first of all, I also will reject the fact that uh, we are not coming out in terms of the economic, the shackles of what we were in two years ago. Uh, quick indices. If you check even inflation last year, it was around 53%. Today, inflation is around 22%. So meaning that... Um, You've, you've gone down half in terms of how things were, you know, the prices of goods were galloping. Again, you took a hit to with your exchange rate, but now you can see that it is gradually coming down and stabilizing. I also want to believe that the, the determination of this government to rebuild this economy um, is something that gives me comfort and gives me hope. But to your question as to whether the MPP will still be the best option to hold on and to continue to deliver economic prosperity. I think on any day I'll choose the NPP over the NDC in terms of the governance. Um, not because I'm a, a party activist or I'm a parliamentary candidate, but there are records to compare. Um, I believe that what we have started today, let me give you a typical example. President Kufour in 2006, the free maternal policy, free maternal care policy that he introduced, during his tenure, um, that, that enabled the women to be able to, well, to deliver safely and for free. 
those products were the first group of students to have been enrolled under the Kufuado's free SHS. If you take a shot into the future. If the MPP had continued in 2008 when Kufu left office, today we wouldn't have been talking free SHS. It would have maybe started in 2009. Mm. We wouldn't have been talking about 1D1F because we would have started that, let's say, in 2012. We would have gone far in terms of our nation's development. Nobody can convince me of one major social intervention policy that was introduced by an NDC administration that caught up with every Ghanaian home. So yes, the challenges are there, but that is why leaders are elected. Okay. And I believe that the reason why I'm convinced Dr. Baumia will do well and will make a fine president is also because he's had the opportunity of seeing the good times, the challenging moments, and decisions that had to be made mm. to also turn a corner. Okay. Now, where we are, any, any um, re re recalculation for us to go back again will mean another op lost opportunity for four years, or let's say eight years, mm. or for whatever years. Then the MPP comes back again to fix a mess and to now set Ghana back. Interesting stuff. Anyway, mm. let's talk about, I mm. mean, um, as we wrap up, I just yeah. want to know what's the biggest lesson you've learned in life this far? Uh, well, people, um, I've seen betrayal. I have seen, you know, people that you expect much from them. Um, they end up not, <laughs> I just want to choose a well. Uh, you know, they, they end up not even sometimes um, 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 recognizing that um, you also made effort. Mm. Again, I've also in my life now come to a point where nothing surprises me because, um, <laughs> you know, the, the moment you allow things to surprise you, you always be disappointed. Yeah. So I've, I have this mentality where you have to have it at the back of your mind that it's a human thing. And don't take away the human factor. Okay. And so I don't blame even people I work with, people I move with, when they disappoint me. Okay. Because I feel that then I they're lost... They're just being human. They are just being human. I get it. So once you're able to have that at the back of your mind, you have to keep pushing. Okay. And for me, one thing that I've also learned, that every setback should be a setup for a comeback to glory. That's an amazing one. Yeah. Every, Perfect way to wrap every, up the yes, conversation. Every, every setback, setback is a setup for a comeback. For a comeback to glory. Because the moment you give up, maybe the next short would have yeah. given you that opportunity. And for me, anytime I see a young person also succeeding, I celebrate it as another young success. Well, I, I love to see today uh, people, people going up, people rising. And it gives me the inspiration that someday the charcoal seller's son can also wear, wear white, white shirts. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Look, today we celebrate your success I as know. well. Congratulations. Thank and you, thank sir. you so much for spending time with us here on Personality Profile. You have an amazing story and I'm glad we got to share it. It's only unfolding and I'm very sure in a few years as well we'll be uh, seeing you on the campaign platform. Yes, sure. Uh, and, uh, President Sanyo. Uh, uh, well, that one, now let me be MP. I don't, I don't get them him yet. Uh, let me be MP. I don't get them yet. Okay. But the insult, that's why I said my grandfather's question. Hey. I'm not sure I answered it well. Because <laughs> some of the insults can go in. Really? But aside that, I think just before you go, mm. um, uh, one of the things that I cherish, I cherish friendship over the politics. Mm. And I have lots of friends. Mm. Um, from media space, from the politics, the political dividers. And I, I love to see, uh, to witness another success story of a young person, okay. whatever the field of endeavor is. Because yeah. why? It gives me the inspiration that someday I can also get up. And let me say thank you to um, uh, my wonderful family, my wife and uh, little ones uh, who are glued to your set to listen. Yeah. They've been a, a good backbone. Nice. And to my old lady and uh, my old man, um, and to my sisters and their family. Mm. Um, look, you can't take away the family factor. Yeah, absolutely. Once they give you the peace of mind and the encouragement,
because you have a low moment. There are yeah. times that I've had that low moment. There are times that I've shed tears. But yeah. in conclusion, anytime I'm down, the moment I step out of my room, I say to myself, I don't want the world to know I'm down. Mm. So that's why I always wear a smile. Sometimes I'll be having a bad day, but that smile maybe will be that infection to also encourage somebody. Somebody out there. So as human as I am, I go through very low moments. Yeah. I have my downside. But um, once I step out of my room or my vehicle, I say to myself, the world shouldn't know I'm down. Samuel. Lexus Ewuku. The pleasure has been mine. Oh, man. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure you remember the last time somebody called you Samuel, huh? Uh, okay, okay, Charlie. Yeah, I have some very yeah. crazy friends. Anytime they call me Samuel, yeah. then that means I've done something wrong. <laughs> but today, I think I'm uh, on personality profile. Yeah. I haven't done anything wrong. No, you haven't. Uh, this is no Samuel. And been. there's no contempt <laughs> in the offense. And, uh, and, and, and then thanks so much to Multimedia. You guys are yes. doing a great job Thank and so to much. your team here. Thank you so hey much. guys, keep on tuning into personality profile. That's you get right. to hear plenty of stories. Yes, and to my vandals out there, charge. Charlie, charge. <laughs> Hold your balls and charge. <laughs> the next I'm, time I'll sing some few songs, so it's fine. Uh, X rated, eh? You could cream us I'm Lexus Bill. It's the personality profile with the Director General of the National Lotteries Authority, NLA, Mr. Sami Ewuku. Thank you so much for uh, staying tuned in. Of course, on behalf of my team, uh, we're grateful that you shared the time with us. Next week, we're back with another wonderful conversation right here.